How's it going everybody? Caster Troy here with another Rust Electronics tutorial video. Uh, as promised, I have made an update to my advanced backup dual system that I had in the previous video. Um, this one has a working timer that will shut down the generators after a set duration. Uh, very handy in case you don't want to run these 24-7. Um, I do want to mention though that I did encounter a bug with this. Um, it appears to be perhaps server lag related or it could be some type of lag related to the electronic system. But I'm noticing that uh, currently what's supposed to happen is battery A will kick in first and it will block uh, battery B from having power come through the system. But for some reason, occasionally, battery B is and A will fire up at the same time for just a split second and it will kick these generators in. Uh, let me see if I can demonstrate this. It didn't work there. And there it goes. Um, it seems to happen roughly, I don't know, maybe 25% of the time I've been able to have that happen. Um, I really don't know the reason why. Like, like I said, perhaps it's server lag but uh, unfortunately that is a glitch that I cannot overcome with the current system I have here. Um, not really a big deal. You're still going to get the power from here. It's just will it'll negate this circuit and it will just run continuously. But anyways, a little bit annoying, but not a huge deal. Anyways, let's go back to how to set this up. Now this is just slightly different from the last video and my advanced battery backup system. Um, just with a slight change. Instead of the XOR switches, I've swapped out these two for OR switches. So that's the only major change to that part of it. Um, I did that because these seem to react just a little bit faster than the XOR switches. Instead of that glitch happening maybe 70% of the time, this has dropped it down to, I don't know, maybe 30 25-30% of the time, they seem to react a little quicker for some reason. That's the only reason I switch. Otherwise, that's, that system will still work the other way. Um, the other change that we have to it is we have an additional electrical branch and a memory cell. We're getting to actually use it for once. I don't use these very often because they're kind of buggy. But it does work good in this system. So... Let's uh, get this baby fired up, shall we? First off, your blocker here, you're going to run into an electrical branch. You need two of them down and a memory cell. Your first electrical branch, you're going to want to have a pretty hefty amount of power draining out of here to the second one. This is a pretty heavy um, draw for this circuit here, unfortunately, because of these stupid splitters that I have to use. It won't work otherwise. Um, and also I want to mention too, these are the new medium rechargeable batteries. Um, obviously the larger batteries are better, but these work just the same. Uh, the only drawback is these only hold 50 and only two hours of battery power, roughly I believe. But they're still pretty nice. And they're not too expensive. So, not a big deal, but only just a little bit lacking of power. So that's why I have quite a bit going in here. Anyways, we'll get back to this. Once you've got this hooked up to here, you're going to want run this uh, branch out to the set of this memory cell. Just to uh, two is all you need there. And the remaining power out, you run into the power in of this memory cell. Now you might as well come over here and drop down everything over here, all these electrical components. So you're going to need one, two, three four, five, six electrical branches, excuse me, seven, there's one up here too. You're going to need one AND switch, one root combiner, two splitters, one timer, one counter, one OR switch, and one regular switch. Um, and lay them out roughly like I have here, maybe make them a little bit neater. Um, yeah. Once you've got that all set up, come on over here to your first electrical branch. You're going to run the output of the memory cell to the power in of that electrical branch. And from there, the power out will go into this one. 
and hook that power out to this one. Just hook them all up in sequence. Uh, these first two branch outs, you can just leave at two. Run the first one to the fourth start of your first generator, and the second one here to the fourth start of this generator. And however many generators you want, you can do this to your heart's content. So you don't need to just have two. You can run this quite a ways if you like. If you want a lot of emergency back power, that is to your discretion, whatever you feel like you need. Uh, this third electrical branch, you're going to take the branch out to the AND switch. Uh, just leave that at two. You don't need much for that. Now the power out from there, you're going to run to another electrical branch. However, this branch out has to be set to 14. It will not work without it. It needs to be set to that number. So set that to 14, and then we're going to come back to where that goes in a minute. But first, we'll go and run the power out to the first splitter. Now, this first splitter, the power out one, is going to run into the timer. And you're going to set your timer to one second. Next, power out two, you're going to run to this switch and turn your switch on. Take the power output from it and run it into input A or B of this OR switch. From the power out of the OR switch, run it into the toggle of the timer. Now, your second splitter, you're going to run the output from the timer to the power in of this splitter. The first power out, you're going to run back down to this OR switch and complete the feedback loop for your timer. This will continuously count one, 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 one until it's told not to. Next, power out two, you're going to run to the increment counter on this counter. That'll count it up every second. Now, the 14 branch that we were talking about earlier, you're going to come back here, take the branch out, and put it into the power in of this counter. That'll power it up when the system turns online. Now we're going to come back to the pass-through. The pass-through you're going to take and run back to this AND switch. So what happens is when that reaches, right now I have it set to 10, when it reaches 10, power will come through here and it'll allow these to be shut down and it'll toggle our switch off. So the power stops coming through here. However, it doesn't quite work and the counter will still go, but these will not fire back up, so it still functions properly. Anyways, you come up to your electrical branch here. You can leave this to two. Run this all the way down to the toggle of the memory cell. From there, you go to the power out and you run it down to the power in of these two electrical branches. And the power out of the first one, run it in the power in of the second one. And both of these branch outs are for the four stops of both these generators. And last but not least, take your power out from these generators, hook them up into a root combiner, and run your root combiner all the way back to your main power source. Make sure to leave a space on there so that you can get that power from there. It's very handy that these actually, when they fire up together, the root combiner actually allows the power to jolt in, and it's, uh, it works great. And that's it. That's how everything's hooked up. So let me show you how this works. We'll disconnect battery A here, and we'll fire it up. So it started at zero. Let's start it again. Okay, so four, when it hits 10, it'll shut down. There you go. It's going to still count and still drawing power from here. However, it should shut down when uh, in the system, how it's supposed to work, this will kick back on and block this battery. So it will then shut this down. It's not going to work right now because this isn't on. Let's put it back on there and it'll shut off. There we go. There it is. And that's all there is to it. So... With that being said, I hope that helps. I hope this is a useful system that you guys can utilize. I think it's pretty neat that they're adding more electronic stuff. I really like this new update with uh, how you can tell what's on the batteries. And it's 
good to see the electronic stuff moving along in Rust. Um, thank you for watching. If you like videos like this, please leave a like and subscribe. And if you need any help, feel free to comment. I'm always willing to explain and give you guys assistance in any of your Rust electronic needs. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.